Hey gang, I'm back. All right, I hope you liked the first of the three-part video series on how to gain an edge in the market. We talked about positioning yourself with the market, with the wave, not, not going against the wave. You don't want to surf against the tide. You will not end well. It won't be pretty end. You will not conquer the ocean and you will not be able to conquer the market. You want to swim with the tide. So let's talk about the second of a three-part video series. Let's talk about confirmation filters for entry. Confirmation filters will increase your percentage of profitability, will increase your win rate, and decrease your risk. So let's talk about that in today's video. All right, we're back, and today we're gonna do the second part of a three-part video series on how to gain an edge in the markets. Just to give you a little review, the first, first video of the series was on positioning, how to position yourself with the markets. We talked about that uh, you want to trade with the waves of the ocean, not against the ocean. You don't want to get caught in a cross current. You don't want to get sucked into the ocean. You want to trade in the direction, just like a surfer, just like somebody with a boogie board. I haven't ridden a boogie board in 40 years. I shouldn't, you shouldn't be listening to me on that. But anyhow, <laughs> uh, let's talk about this. So the second now, now, so I highly recommend you watch that video if you want to learn to position yourself with the market. Now, let's talk about the second topic, and that's how to get comfortable in this chair. No, no, all jokes aside, the second topic is how to filter your entries for better results, better returns, better, um, higher, higher profit to risk ratio. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. And what we're looking at is a chart of Merck. And Merck, I use a, uh, a stock fetcher system, which is a code that stock fetcher provides for me to weed out candidates. Okay. So I take a bunch of stocks. I take the stock fetcher code here and I press a few buttons and I have this code for many, many different setups. And when I, when I did this this morning, Merck was one of the stocks that was on my list. So I decided to go with it. And this pattern is a pullback pattern. And again, it's not a system where I have my entry, exit, and stop level. It's just a, a way for me to pick out potential candidates. And it gave me Merck this morning. And it looks pretty good because Merck is near all-time highs. If you look back about a year, you'll see that it's it's been trailing near all-time highs, kind of congesting between... 80 and 87, which is about 5%, 7, 6% of its range. And again, the stock looks pretty good. It, if you look here, the stock is looking really, really strong. It also does not have a strong correlation or exposure to China. So I like this stock. So going back to the small, small cap view, small side view, the stock looks like it's going to go a little higher right now. And this pattern tells me when a stock makes an all-time high or say a 90-day high and then backs away four days straight and then trades higher. So you would think to yourself, well, you should just buy this stock. It's a great time to buy the stock, but not so fast. What I'm trying to do, I want to increase my percentage of winning trades. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that this stock follows through, that it has more upside before buying it. What if I buy it here and it comes down here? It's not going to be good. Now, you can say to yourself, and you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Roger, what's the guarantee that if you buy it up here that it'll continue going higher? There's no guarantee, but it'll give me at least a little bit more momentum. And when I've done tests where I just buy when the setup appears, whereas I, I buy after a, another condition is, is triggered, it, it actually increases my odds of success statistically by about 20%. Now, you may think to yourself, 20% is not that much, but it is. If you're a trader, a 20% edge, even if your system is close to random, is huge because you can leverage that 20%. So 20% is big. So normally, if you buy, just say, randomly at a market right around here, the current price, 83.60, 83.59, versus waiting and putting a buy stop right here, right at the high, assuming it closes at the high. We would put a buy stop at 84, and we would put the buy stop and just leave it there. And again, that's assuming the price closes and the high today is uh, 83.96. We'd want to see it 
break above the high by just a few ticks, four or five cents is more than enough to show that momentum, upside momentum. So it's counterintuitive because I'm actually buying above the current market price. I am, right? I'm not being cheap for once. No, just kidding. But at the same time, I'm waiting for a little more momentum. That's a very simple filter to not buy a setup when you see the setup, but wait for a confirmation filter. Using a buy stop a few cents above the high price, the last swing high, is a good confirmation filter. And you can, uh, this is a side note, you can also place a tight stop loss right below the low here. So if you're wrong and the setup fails, you'll know right away your risk will literally be between $84 and $82 and, uh, 70, uh, and 88 cents. So you're talking, you're, you're talking a very, $82 and 73 cents. So you're talking about, uh, practically having a risk of, of about a dollar 30 ish on a trade. That's very little for every hundred shares. So you could take small losses like that. And then, you know, one big gain will offset it, which is why I don't get overly concerned about, about profitability, percentage of profit, profitability. But I understand as a swing trader, you want to have as high of a percentage of profitability as possible. And this will help you gain a little bit of an edge. No, it's not going to give you a hundred percent win rate, but it will, it will help you gain an edge and minimize lo losers. And what I typically do is I would, will buy here at right around the 84, 8405 level on a stop. And I'll place a stop loss right below about five, 10 cents below the low. The low, as we know, is at 82.73. I would probably place a stop at 82.65. Again, I would just eyeball it five to 10 cents, depending on volatility. Volatility is not that strong, so about five cents. And if I got stopped out, I'd move on to something else. But it's a really good low risk way to enter the market and use stops and something else. You don't have to sit and watch the stock. You can place a buy stop above the high for tomorrow, a good little cancel order. You can place a uh, protective sell stop here and you can go about your business. You can watch more Roger Scott videos, right? All right, so filters using buy stops above the swing high to make sure you get a confirmation. And if you're selling short, you would just put a sell stop five to 10 cents below the swing low. Using stops, not as a stop loss, but to enter a trade is a great confirmation filter. And it's something that most professional traders use to increase their edge in the markets, which is what this video, this three-part video series is about. So part one, if you wanna review, is about positioning yourself with the market. Video two, that's what we're finishing up with right now is about gaining an edge by using filters, not just, and those filters are using stop orders just above, excuse me, or below the market, depending on if you're going long or short. And again, five to 10 cents is plenty. Place a buy stop or a sell stop. But remember something, remember this is important. If the trade doesn't get executed, you gotta cancel the trade if it's a good to cancel order. Don't leave the, the trade in the system because you're placing these trades for the next day. And if the trade doesn't hit, what if tomorrow morning Merck opens at um, 83.70 and goes lower? Your buy stop at 84.05 or 84 won't get hit. So make sure you cancel those orders because the worst thing and the, the biggest thing that happens to traders is they make simple mistakes and end up costing them a lot of moolah. All right, I'll talk to you guys in a bit and we're gonna do the third of this three-part video and we're gonna talk about the third biggest way to gain an edge in the markets. And the topic is gonna to be diversification. Again, if you're getting something out of this video, ring the bell, subscribe to this channel, and like this video. And if you wanna reach out to me, roger at wealthpress.com. I hope you're enjoying this channel. Talk soon.